Hi and welcome to BG24 Public Affairs. I'm Melissa Belcher. And I'm Gemma Schultz. Tonight we're going to have a special look into BGSU's Dance Marathon, which happened last weekend. That's right, we will give you an inside look and we will also discuss how much of a success the event was. Then switching gears for later on in the evening, from due to it being prom season for most high school students, we will be joined by Jamie Roots, the owner of a local tailoring shop here in BG, Jamie Seems to Fit. That's right, she will be showing us all of the latest prom necessities. But before we get into those interesting topics tonight, here's Heather Poloff with tonight's news and weather. Heather? Thanks, Gemma. BGSU might soon be rated on a new scale. Last week, the Bowling Green, Bowling Green State University's Faculty Senate met to discuss university issues. At the meeting, President Mary Ellen Macy discussed recent proposals on the federal level to rate the nation's universities and colleges. She stressed that the new system would rate, not rank, the schools. The new rating system will evaluate schools based on student retention rates, graduation rates, and the percent of students who default on their student loans. The new system has been proposed because officials don't believe that schools are sufficiently transparent. And incoming veteran students at BGSU will feel more at ease when they arrive on campus. The university is just one in three schools in the nation uh, chosen for a pilot program that will connect incoming veteran students with veteran students already on campus. The program is known as Peer Advisors for Veteran Education, also called PAVE, and is directed by the Veterans Administration. Incoming and current veteran students can connect through the program, which will benefit those new veteran students to locate appropriate resources both on and off campus. The program also provides veteran students with constant support in order to help them reach their academic and personal goals. BG BGSU was chosen to host the pilot program because of the school's excellent reputation in supporting veteran students. And the search for the Malaysian Boeing 777 that disappeared last month continues. The latest development in the search came last week when a Chinese ship reported a pulsing signal from the waters of the Indian Ocean. The signal has not been confirmed to be from the plane, but the Associated Press reports that the signal emits the same frequency emitted by the flight's data recorder. Officials say that this search effort has been the most difficult ever undertaken and will only get harder with time. Those searching for the plane's debris fear that equipment batteries will soon die from emitting beacon signals before they are found. The plane was carrying 239 people when it disappeared March 8th, traveling from Malaysia to Beijing. And now let's take a look at your Black Swamp weather forecast. Today was a great day to be outside. We saw mostly sunny skies with highs reaching up into the lower 50s. For tonight, we'll see those clouds continuing throughout the, uh, throughout the area. Uh, highs, I'm sorry, lows will reach down into the, uh, the upper 30s. Those winds will be continuing from the northwest, a little bit breezy, 5 to 10 miles per hour, chance of rain just 10%, so I wouldn't expect any rain showers for tonight. Taking a look at tomorrow's forecast, highs will jump, high, highs will jump back up into the, uh, the mid-60s with those clouds continuing throughout the area. Winds will be very breezy tomorrow from the southwest at 25 miles per hour. Those southwest winds will be bringing up our temperatures as a warm front moves through the area. Taking a look now at your five-day forecast, Thursday we do see those high temperatures reaching up uh, to 65 degrees. Friday we do see a little bit of a cool, a cooling trend as uh, rain moves through the area. Saturday clears out just a little bit for um, some cloudy conditions, but we do see those rain showers come back into the area for Sunday and Monday. And Monday we cool back down to 49 degrees. And after the break, Gemma and Melissa will be talking about Dance Marathon. Stay tuned. Hi and welcome back to BG24 Public Affairs. This weekend was a busy one for BGSU with dance marathon and bikes for tykes taking place. And we got the special opportunity to go take a look um, at the events going on on Saturday. Take a look. Hey guys, I'm Melissa Belcher. I'm Danielle Griffith. And I'm Gemma Schultz. We're here at BGSU's dance marathon of 2014. That's right, it's 32 hours of non-stop movement and dancing and it's all for the kids. All for the kids, that's right. So stay tuned, we've got all of Saturday's highlights. He is the director of the Financial Affairs, and Reese, what definitely goes into the planning for your job description? 
A lot of what goes into my job is making sure that all of our money is in order. We raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for the kids and there's a lot of um, back and forth that has to happen to make sure that all that money is counted and checked and, and comes through. And so I oversee the financial affairs branch which does a lot with that. Definitely. So could you tell me about from day one of planning up until now, what are some things that have transpired, some obstacles that you guys had to endure to make sure that Dance Marathon 214 was a success? Sure. Um, as you all probably know, we've moved venue. Normally we have it over at the rec center due to the renovations this year. We're having it here at Perry Fieldhouse. Um, from my end, there have been some financial things that we have to do a little differently. Uh, a lot of the equipment we bring is a, is a little bit different than what we were able to bring in at the rec center. And so there's, you know, financial, we don't have the um, connections already with some of those places and establishments that we normally would so there's some challenges there and making sure that we can get that all set up but I gotta tell you I have a wonderful I have a wonderful branch and they were all about making sure that Ziggy Thon happens and is as successful as possible great now we know everyone has their own reason for participating in dance marathon what is your reasons any personal reasons or just like you're just love for the kids you know, it's a combination of things. It obviously comes back to love for the kids, but when I was a first year student on campus, I didn't know how to get involved. And my older sister was involved with Dance Marathon, and she said, Reese, you need to do this. This is going to change your life. And little did I know, it absolutely did. I was an accounting major. I wasn't sure. I was like, is this something I really want to do? You know, the whole philanthropy, and it's it's been an amazing experience, and I've loved every minute of it. like dance stations like dance stations like dance marathon hospitals might not be able to afford the necessary equipment to keep babies keep children alive um, not only in the NICUs but the PICUs the all the different pieces of machinery that they have are to help keep the babies alive okay tell me a little bit about your story I know you have a son um, how um, did you guys uh, how did your experience you know come to happen with dance marathon uh, well, actually, when we were up in the NICU with our son Dominic, um, the bikers came through. And when they allowed them to take a tour of the NICU, but there weren't a lot of parents there to be able to talk with, the, talk with them or let them see the children. And I happened to be there, and um, we allowed them to come into Dominic's space, and they got to see him and got to hear the story. And that's how we were first introduced. And just from there, Christy um, and Misty, they just involved us and wrapped us up, and, and we've been doing it ever since. Okay, yeah, how has your experience been with Dance Marathon for your family? Oh, it's been astronomical. I can't believe the energy that Dance Marathon brings. I can't believe all the support and, and just everything that they do. Um, and I genuinely believe that without Dance Marathons, being able to raise the money for the machines that hospitals would, um, would really struggle. And it's just amazing. I know that we can be so amazing. And baby, your love is going to change me. Hey guys, I'm here with two members of Not Yet Perfect. We just saw them perform at the Ziggy Thon. This is Lauren and Joey. You guys, tell me how it feels to be up there performing for everybody. Um, well, when we were performing on stage, you know, all we could see is just all of the team colors and all the Miracle Children, and it was just, it was so amazing because you knew that even if we messed up in front of everyone, it didn't even matter, but we actually had an amazing performance tonight. We're really excited and just so happy to be here. Okay, yeah, and what's it like, um, you know, you're up on stage and there's all these people here. How does it feel knowing that um, you get to have a little piece of sort of impacting those kids and helping them have a good time? Um, I, I, you know, I said, like, it's an honor, you know, like, to be here to be um, you know I talked to Greg, Greg Cherry he's done an awesome job and uh, getting all the events and everything and just it feels amazing and an honor that we're allowed to be that we are a part of this and just making miracles happen and it's amazing That's all amazing. right thank you so we look forward to seeing you guys maybe next year right yes thank yes. you so much thank you all right thanks guys Dance marathon. I like the atmosphere. Everyone's so energetic and I just love to hear you talk and they're not afraid to come up and say hi. And I like all the dancing too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's my really favorite fun. part too. <laughs> yeah. Learn a few yeah. new moves, right? Yeah.
Well, I don't know about you, Demma, but I am all danced out. That's right, I definitely am too. And you know, I could not imagine being a dancer there on my feet for 32 consecutive hours. It's just crazy, but it is for the kids, so that makes it all worth it. Yes, it is. And stay tuned because after the break, a BG24 News reporter is here to tell us all about her exclusive coverage. Welcome back to BG24 Public Affairs. We're joined by Alana Nussel today. She's a reporter for BG24 News. And BG24 News was at Dance Marathon this weekend giving hour-by-hour hour coverage of the whole event. That's right. So Alana, could you tell us how it was covering all of that dancing and such? Well, it was a great time. You know, I'm only a freshman here, so I didn't really know what to expect. I heard, you know, that it was so crazy and inspiring and just a lot of The, the young, the young, the young kids and what they've gone through, and it was just really interesting to talk to them and find out their stories and see everyone get together and raise money for them. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right, and now, how long were you actually at Dance Marathon? I know you guys were doing hour by hour coverage, but you know there are so many reporters. What um, do your responsibilities look like um, in that 32 hour time frame? Well, I just covered the. You know, you know, you know, very overwhelmed and emotional that they're doing it, and you know, you kind of wrap everything up and you find out the total and it's so many exciting things towards the end. And you know, each hour you kind of go and seek out different people and different stories. And you know, just within one event, there's just so many different things to talk about and report about, and just so many interesting things through all these different people. And what would you say was the best part about being there? I think definitely seeing the sense of like community and just all the just how like selfless everyone was you know you're on your feet for 32 hours and you know you couldn't even tell by their faces they still look so excited and energized and they know that at the end of the day you know it's only it's only 32 hours out of their life that they're donating to these kids where it's going to you know benefit the rest of their lives too yeah. and alana you said you were there for the last To talk to talk to some talk to some, some family members that were waiting for the bikers, um, like boyfriends and sisters of them, and they were all so excited for them because it's another amazing thing that they've done, and that takes such strength and commitment. Dance marathon, dance marathon, dance marathon. Your first year. Well, I think Dance Marathon in itself will contribute a lot to my first year and, you know, how I remember that and mm -hmm. with reporting for BG24. And I think being able to talk to the Miracle Children and how they still have such a sense of positivity and a smile on their face, even though they've gone through so much. And it just shows you to really appreciate what you have. And I'll take that with me for the rest of my life. What is the, what is the, what is the turnaround for that like um, to be able to get it online? Well, it was very exciting. It's very you know fast paced and you know you go out and you find someone and you talk to them quickly and you you know gather some footage of what they're doing or what the event is at the time and you just kind of go in and everyone. It took a lot of teamwork and you know everyone really gave it their all. You're in this small room editing and you know everyone definitely grows closer over just the 32 hours and just kind of throw everything together and you know you'd have no idea that it was that it's such a fast-paced thing because it still appears so professional when it's uploaded and did you get to dance at all along with the other people there I did a little bit yeah towards the end um, as you know some of the it was kind of contagious you know you're just off to the side filming but with mm -hmm. them dancing and being so energized you just can't help but dance too yeah yeah, definitely. Is is there um, maybe a specific story that you got to see there, or a specific child that you really felt like um, their story impacted you? Well, what I thought was really interesting, there was a family, um, it was a mother and her daughter who, um, she's still in elementary school, I believe, and her, uh, her brother actually started making, he made a drawing after dinner one night that kind of represented Dance Marathon about um, BGSU, and he just made a drawing for fun, you know, to benefit her and being at Dance Marathon, and it actually ended up being auctioned off at the marathon. They've gone to it before, and they were able. He, they took his drawing that he made for his sister, and they were able to auction off and actually have it raise money, which they didn't expect. 
So they're able to, you know, their whole family was able to contribute for her and it was really special. That is so awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. I think <laughs> it's safe to say that Dance Marathon was a huge success and we're so happy that we were able to be a part of it. And when we and when we come back, Jamie from Jamie Seems to Fit will be here giving us all of the latest prom fashion and alteration advice. Stay tuned. Hi, and welcome back to BG24 Public Affairs. For all of you um, Bowling Green prom, High School seniors, prom is just around the corner. And unless you're one of the lucky people who um, has no problems fitting into your dress perfectly, then most likely you'll need alterations. So here from Jamie Seems to Fit, right here in downtown Bowling Green, is Jam Jamie Zilk. Thank you so much for coming on, Thanks Jamie. Thanks for having me. Okay, now, um, as I mentioned, prom season is really approaching fast. Now, um, starting off for, with advice for girls, if I was a girl and I was going to a store, would you um, recommend, if I didn't have the perfect body for a dress and it just magically <laughs> fit me perfect, would you recommend getting a dress that is too large or a little too small? A little bit too large. Too large, okay. Usually what we like to do is to get it fit around the waist and hips and then let me take care of the rest of it. Okay, now you don't want to get it too many sizes um, too large, no. right? Okay. Especially now because a lot of the girls are, uh, the gowns this year are beaded and rhinestones, so mm -hmm. it's very difficult to take in and okay. let out. Now, how early should someone um, get their dress or tuxedo to a seamstress for alterations? Now. Now. Um, the proms have already started last week. Um, they'll continue through the second week in May. Okay. And. It's just me down there doing all the alterations and tailoring on them. So they do need to get them in quick, but I will get them done. Um, yeah. Just need to get them in. <laughs> now, does the, the amount of time um, alter between a dress and a tuxedo? Well, the tuxedos, uh, basically, that's through Jim's formal wear. And so okay. I, the boys come in and they get measured, and then I order their tuxes. Um, those come in ready to wear. They fit them when they come in. As far as the girls' dresses, they do need to come in, make sure that they have their shoes, and get them tried on so that I can get them pinned and ready to go. Okay. And um, what do you typically charge for um, a dress or tuxedo? Uh, the dresses vary because there's so many different varieties yeah. of dresses out there. Um, as far as the boys, uh, they all start out, we've got a uh, budget tux that starts out at eighty nine ninety five, and that covers everything uh, vest, tie, shirt, pants, jacket, and shoes. And then they uh, increase in increments of ten dollars. It just depends. We've got quite a few different designer tuxedos available as well. Okay. And um, speaking of that, you sell dresses as well, correct? I was recently picked up by the Desi Corporation out of New York, so now I have a full line of bridesmaids dresses, flower okay. girl, mother of the bride, mother of the groom, okay. and I've got a few girls here models, showing yeah. some of them. Could you have the first one come out and show Blake off her dress? Out. Blake is wearing one of our long Alfred Song with a chiffon overlay. All of the uh, Alfred songs start out at around 170 and go on up. They're very reasonably priced. They um, also have an after six and also a Desi line that we carry as well. Okay, I love that blue, that was beautiful. Yeah. Could the next one come up? Logan is wearing another one of the Alfred songs in one of the shorter cocktail. And a lot of the brides have uh, gone to wearing the short dresses this year for their bridesmaids versus the long ones. So we've got uh, probably close to 80 or 100 different varieties of dresses wow. available for the girls. But they do need to get in as well. Um, Ordering on the dresses takes between eight and 12 weeks. Okay. So you do bridesmaid dresses, but do you also do um, wedding gowns as well? I do a lot of wedding gowns, uh, all of the bustling and tailoring. I do a lot of um, design work as well. Okay. I design a lot of wedding gowns as well as um, bridesmaids dresses and proms. Mm -hmm. And you do um, custom made dresses for mm -hmm. girls for prom too. How long does that typically take? Uh, it depends on how extravagant they are. Yeah. Uh, normally the girls come in with a picture of what they want okay. and I put a pattern together. Right now I'm making a beautiful snow camo wow. dress okay. that is, it'll be awesome. 
Okay, okay. And do you all have any deals going on right now for the kids for prom? We do. Most of the high school students receive this, which is uh, $40 off all of their tuxedo rentals for all wow. the proms around here. Okay. And uh, it's a really good deal for all the guys. I see. Very good. Wow. And um, where exactly are you located downtown? We are downtown on Main Street at 186 South Main. I just did move down there the 1st of January. The uh, building is very large and ready to accommodate all the proms and weddings we have coming up. Okay. And um, does the material of a dress affect the uh, time that it takes to alter a dress at all? Uh, not, not so much the material, but all of the beading. The beading. Yeah, oh, okay. that's pretty de detailed work. Is that work. pretty much in right now? Everybody loves the beading? Yeah, yeah. very much so. And wh what would you say about long versus short? Which one seems to be more in right now? As for proms, they're all going to be long. Long? Yeah. Okay. Bridesmaids are tending to go more towards okay. the shorter. When I was in prom, everyone um, wanted a short dress, so, no, so I guess long now. time has changed. <laughs> and um, how many dresses would you say that you do um, for a prom season each year? Oh, Lord. Dozens. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Okay. Well, that means she's great, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but stay tuned because when we come back, me and Gemma will be telling you about what's in store for next week's show. Hi, and welcome back to VG24 Public Affairs. Now, I don't know about you, Gemma, but I definitely have some crazy prom memories. Yes, I do too. And hearing from the um, dress seamstress, it definitely made me think back to high school and just remember all of those crazy times. I can remember, you know, as girls, yeah. your dress is everything. You dream oh, about it from the time you're a freshman. And exactly. you spend all that time and so much money, let me mm -hmm. tell you. Mm -hmm. And it was all about the hair for me. If my hair wasn't right, then I didn't feel right. Yes, definitely. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, that's our show for tonight. Thank you for joining us. Next week, we're going to find out how to decorate your own Easter baskets in honor of the upcoming holiday. Sounds like a pretty great show next week. And um, don't forget about BG24 News Friday night at 530. Good night, everybody.